it's pretty typical for a multiplayer shooter game to have its own pile of popular guns, the ones that everyone likes to use a lot more than the others. The Battlefield series is no different in this respect, because in each of the game's classes there's certain guns that tend to get loads of attention, often meaning that quite a few of the others are left on the shelf. But out of these less popular guns, there are a few hidden gems that might seem a little bit rubbish or bog standard from the face of it, but are actually a lot better than people generally assume. These are Battlefield's underrated guns, many of which deserve more credit than they generally get, because they can actually be pretty good. Most of them don't get used anywhere near as much as they probably should do, as they don't seem quite as appealing as those go-to guns that the rest of the server is usually filled up with instead. There's a hell of a lot of these kind of weapons over the franchise, and we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of them today. Obviously, it can be a bit of a subjective topic, and because there's so many of them out there, it can be a bit hard to narrow it down into a chronological list. But if there's a few guns that don't make it, do feel free to add your choices down below in the comment section, and let me know what you think about the ones featured in the video. So without further ado, here's my top 20 most underrated and underused weapons in the Battlefield games. So starting the list off with a pretty strong choice, the A91 from Battlefield 4, an all kit carbine that tends to fly under the radar a bit compared to its similar counterparts. Now normally, short range weapons with fast fire rates tend to get quite a lot of attention, but for some reason the A91 never really does, which is a bit strange. The gun shoots at 800 RPM, which is pretty decent as far as it goes, plus it also has a fairly manageable recoil pattern considering, making it a deadly option for run and gun playstyles. I guess it tends to get upstaged by a few of the other carbines that can spew their bullets out even faster, like the ACWR and the MTAR-21. But the A91 still has a really well balanced set of attributes, with its recoil being easier to control and predict. Reloads can seem a bit finicky, but so long as you duck and cover when you're swapping over those mags, the A91 can be a bit of a beast in close quarters, definitely a gun that doesn't get enough justice. Next gun down the line is the Bolt Action Commando Carbine from Battlefield 5, one of the medic class's lesser used weapons. Now this thing often seems to get outshined by the M28 Tromboncino and the Jungle Carbine, because those guns pack more of a punch and can generally be more punishing and easier to use for long distance takedowns, often making them seem like better weapons for countering snipers. A lot of people don't really like the Commando Carbine, but a big reason for that is probably because they're not using it right and not landing their shots on target. The Commando's got a lower bullet speed than usual, so it can be a bit harder to use over longer ranges. With that said, it can often perform a lot better with aggressive playstyles, killing quicker than the other two within shorter sightlines, plus having more ammo to expend too. The key to succeeding with it is to use it closer to the action, and learn to lead your target's movements if they're a tad further away. It can be a tricky thing for the average player to master, but providing you're accurate, it can often be more effective in the right situation. Not to mention that it's also got that built-in suppressor as well, which is also a pretty nice addition. In our 18th spot is Battlefield 1 Shogun Inertial, probably the best well-rounded shotgun in the whole game. While the Model 10A is ruling the roost and generally being a lot of Assault players' go-to shotgun, there's a few others that don't get anywhere near as much credit as they should, with the Shogun Inertial probably being the most notable choice. This gun pretty much bridges the gap between the fast firing 12G Auto and the much more damaging Model 10A, sort of giving you a nice in-between option that's still capable of dealing a reasonable amount of damage while still being able to shoot at a decent speed due to its semi-automatic nature. You can typically kill most targets in one or two shots up close, which is still faster than both the M97 and the Model 10A if the first shot doesn't take down your opponent. The Shogun Inertial is also blessed with one of the best recoil patterns and one of the tightest choke spreads of all the shotguns too so it's got quite a few things going for it, considering it's a weapon that barely gets a look in. The M1A1 Thompson, otherwise commonly known as the Tommy Gun, has appeared in quite a few Battlefield games in the franchise, but in Battlefield Hardline it often gets overlooked by most of the other, much more modern weapons. It doesn't seem quite as appealing as a lot of the other choices, having no optical attachments and a pretty bog standard boring set of stats from a first glance. Its fire rate isn't too marvellous, neither is its damage output over range, and with a lot of the other weapons being more inviting with tastier kill times, quicker bullet speeds and access to a much wider array of attachments, this often means that the poor old M1A1 gets left on the shelf. 
And on the face of it, it doesn't really seem like a worthy choice to pick over some of the others, but the gun does have a few less obvious hidden characteristics that can let it shine in some gunfights nevertheless. It happens to have some generously low hit fire spread values, but it can also be pretty accurate too when aiming down sights, providing you burst your shots into smaller groupings. It's definitely not a superior option, but it's still a decent alternative for the classes that don't typically specialise in SMGs, with the M1A1 being an all kit weapon. Chugging its way into our 16th spot is Rambo's weapon of choice, the M60, aka the Pig, a big bulky bugger of a gun that can chew through quite a lot of ammunition. A lot of people tend to shrug the M60 off in a few of the games, like in Battlefields 3 and 4, mainly down to it having a few noticeably substandard traits. It's got the laziest fire rate of all the LMGs, a pretty hefty amount of recoil per shot, and one of the most painfully slow reload speeds in the entire series, not exactly a fantastic bunch of stats to have. Not to mention the fact that the gun's iron sights are also pretty blocky, and they can often get in the way a bit, especially in Battlefield 4, still obstructing your view even if you equip some optical attachments. So for the normal everyday player, the M60 will often be a hard pass, despite it dealing more damage per bullet. But combine this bad boy with a bipod, and you've got yourself a pretty stable high damage weapon that can punish players over range. The heavy amounts of suppression will be more than enough to put snipers off return in the fire, and the gun's large ammo capacity can keep you going for quite a while, with the M60's steady fire rate making it easier to control how much ammo you expend. Next up on the list is the Model 8 from Battlefield 5, a self-loading rifle for the recon class that tends to get ignored a lot because of the other choices on offer. There's no denying that the ZH-29 steals a lot of the Model 8's thunder. It's a similar kind of weapon with a lot more range, being a much more effective gun for taking on snipers and players running around in the distance. In fact, a lot of the other SLRs have a pretty hard time trying to compete with the ZH-29 too, but the Model 8 isn't really designed to compete with it, because it slots into a totally different playstyle altogether, which is why it often gets overlooked. The Model 8 is basically a more aggressive version, with its stats playing into an offensive role. It's got the quickest kill times in close to medium distances of all the SLRs, along with the best recoil pattern too, and it's this combination of speed and stability that'll often give it an edge in gunfights closer to the action, usually being able to beat other self-loaders with its snappy two-hit kill takedowns and providing you stick within the Model 8's optimal range, it can still be a decent gun to pick. Right from the very beginning of Battlefield 1's life cycle, the Hewitt Automatic has generally been a bit of an outcast. This is mainly down to it essentially looking like a poor man's Lewis gun, holding less ammo per magazine and having a marginally slower fire rate. The Lewis gun doesn't exactly shoot very fast either, so I guess you could say that the Hewitt doesn't really have much going for it from a general point of view. While the gun lacks in a few of these areas though, it definitely makes up for in its ability to stay on target, as although it won't be able to gun down loads of enemies with a single mag, the Hewitt does have a very respectable recoil pattern, being much more accurate than the Lewis gun. It's not exactly a very aggressive gun, so don't expect to be blitzing your way through buildings and trenches with it, but providing you try and keep a bit of distance and learn to counter its long reloads by swapping over those mags before you empty them, the Hewitt Automatic can be a bit of a laser beam, designed for planting bullets in your enemies' heads and picking off targets from afar. Ever since the UMP-9 came along in Battlefield Hardline's Getaway DLC, the UMP-45 sort of became a bit obsolete, with it having a smaller ammo capacity and an ever so slightly slower fire rate. Neither of the two guns are exactly bullet hoses, only being able to shoot at the rates of 600 and 650 RPM but they are generally known for having some of the better accuracy stats of the SMG type weapons. Now a lot of hardline fans will argue that the UMP9 is the better version of the two, because of the things I've just mentioned, and although it is a pretty good weapon, the UMP45 is still a worthy choice, because of its slightly higher minimum damage value. There's barely anything in it, but it's still enough to allow the UMP45 to kill in less bullets over longer distances, and because neither of the two guns are really brilliant things to whip out in a close range fight, because of those crappy fire rates, this extra range damage can be a lot more useful than you'd probably think, making the weapon a lot more viable over medium distances, complementing that steadier than average recoil pattern quite nicely. In 12th place is Battlefield 4's G36C, an all-kit carbine that's appeared in quite a few of the different titles. 
Now this gun was a more popular choice back in Battlefield 3, back when it had a more impressive fire rate of 750 RPM. But when it returned to Battlefield 4, the G36C had that fire rate reduced to 650 RPM, which put quite a lot of people off using it, now being one of the slowest firing automatic weapons in the game. The G36C has never really been a particularly popular weapon in the game, because it's not quite as aggressive as a lot of the other guns on offer. And with the carbines catering to close quarter combat and rush tactics, this sort of made the poor old G36C seem a bit pointless for its intended purpose. It's not going to inflict tons of damage very quickly, but it is going to be able to stay on target a lot easier, having a really good recoil pattern and above average bullet speed, letting you keep the bullets whizzing by without having to worry too much about the gun's kit getting in the way. This can also make it seem a bit more versatile too, being able to take care of your enemies over medium ranges a little bit easier than its alternatives. Next up is Battlefield 5's Gewehr 15, easily one of the better semi-automatic weapons in the game that doesn't get used anywhere near as much as it probably should. This thing is designed to be used with an aggressive mindset, because it can be really strong up close, killing in free shots while retaining a decent shooting speed. And unlike a lot of the other guns of a similar nature, the Gewehr 15 also happens to hold a hell of a lot more bullets and reload them at a much quicker pace than normal due to it using magazines. With all that said, it can be a bit naff if you try and use it against people further away, and because a lot of players will use the gun and probably compare its effectiveness to those other semi-auto rifles, they're probably not going to be too impressed with its performance as a whole, especially with it having that low muzzle velocity, making it a trickier weapon to use. But providing you play to the Gewehr 15 strengths and remember its limitations, it can be a really bloody good gun for those who like to get a bit closer to all the action. Now, Battlefield 1's Madsen machine gun has never really been a big favourite in the game's community. I guess a lot of people are put off by the fact that it's got that massive magazine sticking out of the top of its receiver, covering up a pretty big chunk of the screen and obstructing your view. This is a deal breaker for a lot of players, as it gets in the way and makes the gun seem a bit clumsy to use at times, but if you can get past that drawback, the Madsen MG is one of the most well-rounded LMGs in the game, having a good balance of accuracy, lethality and versatility while being able to handle with ammunition fine enough too. It's a fairly good gun for most playstyles, being able to kill up close and from afar, but it often gets left behind in favour of the other light machine guns, just because of that bloody awkward magazine. If you can cope with it looking a bit more cumbersome on the screen though, the Madsen is still a decent weapon that can adapt to most situations quite well. In ninth place is the PO8 carbine, a recon weapon in Battlefield 5 that sort of slips under the radar, being something that barely anyone tends to use. This gun wasn't exactly a monster in Battlefield 1, being a less effective tanker pilot weapon, so we suppose there's a certain stigma that the PO8s carried across with it, being an inferior weapon to use in comparison to a lot of the others. But the fact is, the PO8 carbine in Battlefield 5 can be a much more useful firearm than in the past, having some decent stats to support it as a viable mid-range gun. Its muzzle velocity is higher than the trench carbine, and it deals more damage over longer ranges too, allowing it to take people down in less bullets. It kind of plays out like a beefed up sidearm with loads of ammo to expend, because that's exactly what it is. And because it has a generously low amount of hip fire spread and can kill in free shots up close, it can still be quite deadly in CQC, making the gun quite flexible. A lot of Battlefield Hardline players seem to sleep on the HK-51, with it being one of those guns that often gets ignored. Considering it's such a deadly battle rifle, it's not a very popular one, probably down to it kicking around like a mule on crack every time you squeeze its trigger, causing the gun to fly around and lose control, which is never a good thing. But if you persevere with that high recoil for a bit, you'll eventually unlock a few attachments for the gun that'll help to counter that jumpy kick quite a lot, making it far more effective. I suppose a lot of players aren't willing to grind for those attachments, and are quite happy to just pass on the gun and move on to something that's a little bit easier to aim with. But the HK-51 can actually be a bit of a secret god gun for the Enforcer class, if you can get to grips with it. Especially if you take advantage of the rifle's unique burst fire mode, which a lot of people don't really know about, letting the HK-51 blast out a couple of shots at a time, making it even easier to manage. Definitely one of Hardline's more powerful underestimated guns.
In Battlefield 1, the Russian 1895 lever action rifle is generally a fairly popular gun, but its trench variant on the other hand isn't. It functions in a very different way to the other variants on offer, sacrificing damage over range for extra speed, sort of making it a one of a kind kind of weapon compared to the others in the scout class. It might be unique, but it's not appreciated very much by a lot of players, often seeming like a trickier thing to use because of its lower bullet speed and power. Other snipers in the distance will often be able to survive a couple of well-placed bullets, laughing in your face while they take you down with one of those much stronger bolt actions. The trench variant is not the gun you really want to be using as an anti-sniper weapon, as it's going to be much more useful over medium distances instead, potentially having the fastest two-shot kill times of all the other rifles by quite a large margin. It doesn't have a sweet spot zone like a lot of the others, but it's still going to knock massive chunks out of your enemy's health bar if they're not too far away being a really effective gun for finishing off weakened targets and pushing forwards closer to the objective. Probably one of the most underrated DMRs in the series has got to be Battlefield 4's QBU-88, another forgotten weapon that really doesn't get the attention it deserves. A lot of players are put off by the fact that this gun can only hold 11 rounds, which is a fair bit less than normal, with most of the other DMRs nearly holding double that. The QBU's reloads are also on the lengthy side, which doesn't really help very much, so all in all it's not exactly the most dependable thing in the world, which is one of the reasons why it's considered to be inferior to a lot of DMR users. But when it comes down to the performance of the rifle, the QBU-88 is actually one of the most effective long range weapons in the game, having the highest bullet speed of all the DMRs and one of the lowest amounts of recoil. These two factors really complement each other for ranged combat, which is what these kind of guns are designed to excel in and combined with a very respectable fire rate, the QBU-88 is one of the best choices on offer, if you can get over the fact that you're probably going to be running out of ammo a bit more than normal. Next up on the list in 5th place is the MP-34, one of Battlefield 5's most overlooked submachine guns. Just like in any first person shooter game, the rapid firing bullet hoses often get a lot more praise and usage than some of the slower ones. Time to kill is one of the most important factors, and it's one that tends to attract a lot of players to use certain guns over the others. With the MP-34 being one of the game's slower firing SMGs, this doesn't exactly go in its favour, neither does the fact that it only holds 20 rounds per magazine. This is usually enough for a lot of players to fob the gun off and use one of those faster shooting weapons instead, but the MP-34's actually got a few fancy tricks up its sleeve, killing players in one less bullet over longer distances whilst also having one of the nippiest bullet speeds and higher amounts of accuracy, helping to make it feel like a much more versatile choice overall. Not many people give the MP-34 the time of day, seeming like a pretty generic slow shooting SMG on the face of it, but these hidden factors really help to make the gun shine, making it one of the more underrated weapons in Battlefield 5. Now, the RSC SMG is one of those guns that a lot of people really hate to use, but in the right scenario, it can actually be one of the deadliest close range weapons in the game. It's pretty obvious why this gun's got a bad reputation. It only holds 9 rounds at a time, and it's got some really finicky reloads that seem to take bloody ages to perform. Considering the RSC is going to be running out of ammo constantly because of that low ammo capacity, you're going to be thrown into awkward situations quite often especially with the weapon excelling so close to the danger, where that high damage can be fully utilised. There's no denying that it's a bit of a risky thing to use, definitely not the most reliable gun either, but its rapid kill times and decent range still makes it a very effective option in 1v1 gunfights. The RSC SMG can actually perform a bit better than a lot of the others over medium ranges too, with it having the highest bullet speed in the class, kind of acting a bit like a short ranged SLR if you tap the trigger. So long as you learn how to use the gun properly, retreat when you need to, and equip a good sidearm to switch over to when shit hits the fan, then the RSE SMG can actually be a much better weapon than a lot of people think. Coming in at third place is the L85A2, an assault rifle that never really seems to get the credit it deserves in quite a few of the games, like in Battlefields 3 and 4. The L85A2 has always sort of been perceived as a bit of a generic rifle, never really having a very impressive fire rate or damage model to give it much appeal. This was more of the case in Battlefield 3, where it only shot at 650 RPM, but even when that was increased in the next game to 750 RPM, the gun still didn't seem to get much traction in the community. 
Assault rifles like the AEK, M416, F2000 and A23 were always the much more dominant ones on the server, but the L85A2 still had a lot of potential to be one of those popular weapons. It had a well-rounded set of attributes, along with a few nice stats thrown into the mix too, with it having one of the higher muzzle velocities and one of the lowest first shot recoil multipliers in the class, making it a perfect little tool for tap firing against enemies further away. Definitely one of Battlefield's more underrated weapons that deserves to be on more loadouts. Next up in second place is Battlefield 1's Machine and Pistol M1912 P16, but more particularly, that burst via experimental variant. This little bugger can be an absolute menace in the right hands, sort of functioning like an ultra powerful sidearm, because although it's only got a limited mag size, which can often take a fair bit of time to refill with the gun using clips and individual rounds, it'll only be firing two bullets at a time at a rate of 1200 RPM, which in a lot of cases up close will kind of act like a single powered shot because of its speed. It takes four bullets to take someone down up close, so basically two little bursts from the P16 should be enough to get the job done nice and easy, usually letting it kill far quicker and far easier than most of the other guns in the game. It does have a bit of a learning curve to get the hang of, but once you master it, that experimental variant can be a proper monster, and a pretty fun thing to use too. So the last weapon on the list is the RPK-12 from Battlefield 4. Not exactly the most aggressive weapon in the series, but definitely one of the most versatile. A lot of people seem to avoid this gun because of its damage model and time to kill. It only shoots at 600 RPM, which is a little bit below average in the game, and its bullets aren't really all that powerful, considering there's other options available that shoot at a similar speed, which can kill in less shots. But that's pretty much where the negatives stop, because the RPK-12 does almost everything else right, often making up for that lower damage by having a much higher degree of accuracy, letting you land more bullets on target a lot easier over further distances. It's got a lot of precision, and it also has a decent mag size of 60 rounds, along with the fastest reloads in the class, and all of these factors combined together make up a really effective well-rounded gun. Perhaps not one to be brushing into hectic areas head first on Operation Locker, but one that's going to feel really useful in a variety of different situations. So there's loads of underrated and underused weapons in the Battlefield games, obviously not all of them can make the list, but let me know which guns you think are the most underrated in the comments. Do you agree with the ones I've picked? Are there any more you'd like to add? Feel free to discuss all of that down below. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, have a great day, and I'll be seeing you in that next episode.